Hi, I am Ahmed Zishan and I am going to present top 10 AWS services as per my opinion. You may disagree with me with the rating I have given but you will find them to be more related to networks considering me a seasonal network engineer. First of all I am going to give a brief introduction of AWS services. Amazon Web Services is currently world's leading cloud service provider. It came into existence in 2002 and remained the only public cloud service provider for many years till in 2009 Google, Google Cloud Platform, started providing cloud-based solutions. Microsoft Azure, who is currently considered the biggest competitor of Amazon didn't step into this domain till 2010. However, the pace with which Azure is occupying the cloud industry it seems they may overtake Amazon as leading cloud service provider in next few years. AWS has a worldwide presence. Currently it has its footprints across 245 countries having around over 26 regions. It spans over 84 availability zones within 26 geographic regions around the world, with announced plans for 24 more availability zones and 8 more AWS regions in Australia, Canada, India, Israel, New Zealand, Spain, Switzerland, and United Arab Emirates, UAE. It has total 310 plus points of presence and 108 direct connect locations. It is one of the most important AWS, compute, service and this is the reason I have mentioned it on the top. Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud, Amazon EC2, is a web service that provides highly secure, resizable compute capacity in the cloud. It provides users with a reliable and scalable on-demand infrastructure. It is widely used by customers because of having simple and quick options to be selected from pre-configured software on Amazon machine images from AWS Marketplace and getting started without any delay. EC2 Amazon console can be launched with a single click and its installation is also quite simple. EC2 has the following features. More workloads including SAP, HPC, machine learning, Windows, and many more run on AWS than on any other cloud. 300 plus instance types to help optimize the cost and performance of customers' workloads. Available with choice of processor, storage, and networking options, operating system, and purchase model. Next in the list is AWS Lambda. AWS Lambda is an awesome serverless compute service. It allows users to run their code without provisioning or managing servers. Users only need to upload their code on Lambda and it is executed whenever needed and scales automatically as per the size of workload. Here users are charged only when the code is executed, you are charged for every 100 milliseconds your code executes and the number of times your code is triggered. Users are not charged when their code is not running. Lambda is in use in industries widely for different purposes like for image processing, it can process images loaded in S3 and creates thumbnails, analysis of social media data. Moreover, it can be used in the form of serverless backends to handle web, mobile, Internet of Things, IoT, and third-party API requests. It can be used to build strong web applications without worrying for the administration of servers. It can also be used to pre-process data before feeding it to your machine learning model. It can be used with AWS CloudWatch to mitigate DDoS attacks. AWS CloudWatch. This is my favorite AWS service. It is the network management system provided by AWS to its customers so that they can monitor different KPIs for the services they have purchased from AWS. It collects data from the AWS resources in the form of logs, metrics, events which can be used for fault management, performance management as well as for different troubleshooting purposes. You can make different customized dashboards here as per your requirements. Next in the list is VPC virtual private cloud. It enables customers to launch AWS resources in a virtual network they have defined. 
This virtual network resembles their own traditional network in the data center with additional benefits of scalable infrastructure of AWS. It allows customers to have complete control over all the resources including IP pool selection, routing tables, network gateways. It provides customers with privilege to use both IPv4 as well as IPv6 addresses for the resources. Here you can allocate public addresses to few internet-facing nodes as well as private addresses to the internal nodes. NATing also can be done, using NAT gateways, and connectivity of one VPC can be done with another VPC using different methodologies, VPC peering etc. Whenever we refer to VPC we see few commonly used terms which I will briefly mention below. Security groups, it allows users to set inbound as well as outbound rules and guidelines for the access of network. Internet gateway, a service which allows different instances in public subnet to access the internet. NAT gateways, they are used to access internet. Elastic IPs, fixed static IPS assigned to different resources in VPC. VPC endpoints, it enables private connectivity to services hosted in AWS, from within your VPC without using an Internet Gateway, VPN, Network Address Translation, NAT, Devices, or Firewall Proxies. Route 53 One of my favorite AWS services is Route 53. It is the domain name system web service provided by AWS. It is a highly available, scalable, reliable cost-effective, low-latency and secure DNS web service due to which it is in use by many famous customers like Coursera, Medium, Reddit Instacart Airbnb etc. It also offers domain name registration that is you can purchase and manage domain names such as abc.com and Amazon Route 53 will automatically configure DNS settings for your domains. It is providing its customer with different routing policies like failover, geolocation, latency-based routing, geoproximity route policy, etc. which enables it to have features mentioned above. Next in line is Elastic Load Balancer. It is one of the most used AWS services especially because of its ability to make customers' network highly available, scalable, and reliable. Elastic Load Balancers distributes downstream traffic across multiple target services slash offerings which can be EC2 instances, containers, Lomba services, and even IP addresses, single or even in multiple availability zones. They redirect traffic to other instances even if they observe them to be unhealthy and distribute the load between healthier ones. AWS has three kind of load balancers as mentioned below. Classic Load Balancers Application Load Balancers Network Load Balancers AWS Shield Advanced It is an expansive service, that is $3,000 per month, but it provides DDoS protection solution to the customers which is very necessary nowadays considering recent cyber attacks. Apart from the basic network and transport layer protection being provided by AWS Child Standard, which comes with all services free of cost, AWS Shield Advanced provides additional detection and mitigation against large and sophisticated DDoS attacks, near real-time visibility into attacks, and integration with AWS WAF, a web application firewall. Which means no need to buy these services separately. AWS Shield Advanced also gives customers with 24-7 access to the AWS Shield response team and protection against DDoS-related spikes in your Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud, Elastic Load Balancing, Amazon CloudFront, AWS Global Accelerator and Amazon Route 53 charges. AWS Shield Advanced is available globally on all Amazon CloudFront, AWS Global Accelerator, and Amazon Route 53 Edge locations. You can also enable AWS Shield Advanced directly on an Elastic IP or Elastic Load Balancing in the different AWS regions. Simple Storage Service, S3. It provides users with secure, durable and highly available, 
99.9999999999% cloud storage. In S3 you can store a large amount of data at a very low cost. It is ideal for backup and archival of critical data. Here customers can store unlimited size of data. Amazon S3 offers a wide range of storage classes designed for different use cases and customer requirements. I am listing them below one by one with their usage and benefits. Amazon S3 Standard S3 Standard It is general purpose S3 Storage S3 Standard for general purpose storage of frequently accessed data. Amazon S3 Intelligent Tiering S3 Intelligent Tiering It is used for data with unknown or changing access patterns. S3 Standard and Frequent Access S3 Standard IA It is used in case customers want to use data very infrequently. For example if a customer is using it for storing some data which you have to use only weekly or few times in a month. S31 Zone and Frequent Access S31 Zone IA S31 Zone IA stores data in a single AZ and costs 20% less than S3 Standard IA. Amazon S3 Glacier S3 Glacier It is the cheapest S3 storage class but here data retrieval may take up to 3 to 5 hours. It is ideal for data archiving. Amazon RDS Amazon Relational Database Service Amazon RDS is a web service that helps customers to configure an easy to set up, easy to operate and a very scalable relational database on AWS cloud. RDS allows customers to focus more on application and the schema and manages itself tedious administrative tasks like backups, scaling, patching and replications etc. Amazon RDS is available on different database instance types, general purpose, memory optimized, and performance optimized and can be used with six famous widely used database engines namely Amazon Aurora, MySQL, PostgreSQL, MariaDB, Oracle SQL and SQL Server, and Amazon Aurora. Amazon CloudFront Last and tenth service in my list is AWS CloudFront. Amazon CloudFront is a global content delivery network CDN, service offered by AWS. It helps developers and businesses to deliver content to the end customers globally using a very low latency, high transfer speed using a global network of edge locations. CloudFront works seamlessly with services including AWS Shield for DDoS mitigation, Amazon S3, Elastic Load Balancing or Amazon EC2 as origins for your applications, and Lambda at Edge to run custom code closer to customers' users and to customize the user experience. Lastly, if you use AWS origins such as Amazon S3, Amazon EC2 or Elastic Load Balancing, you don't pay for any data transferred between these services and CloudFront. AWS free tier includes 50 GB data transfer out, 2 million HTTP and HTTPS requests with Amazon CloudFront. That's it. Thank you for staying with us. I hope you guys have enjoyed it and found it fruitful. Please give your feedback in the comments section. Soon I will be back with a new video.